The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to talk about switches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, we're not talking about video games? Oh, not this kind of switch? All right, fine. Well, in a previous Learning Circuit episode, we did an overview of switches. But today, I'm going to throw a little more info at you and cover pulls, throws, and relays. Switches are used to make or break connections in electrical current. They can be used to connect a load to a power supply or send signals within a circuit. One of the first lessons I covered here on the learning circuit is about open and closed circuits. Electricity needs to flow in a circle. If there is a break in the circle, current ceases to flow. That's what switches do. They can close or make a connection, allowing current to flow, or they can open or break the circuit. The most basic switch has two contacts. One contact moves to make or break contact with the other. This is known as a single pole, single throw switch. These switches have two pins, one for each point of contact. If two of these types of switches were contained within the same package, it would be a double pole, single throw switch. Looking at a DPST switch, it has four contacts, like having one SPST switch here and another one here. Both contact pairs are opened or closed by the same physical mechanism and at the same time. So you can have two isolated circuits, one connected here and another connected here, both controlled by a single switch. The number of electrically separate switches within a single package controlled by a single actuator are the poles. These are all single throw switches. Each has a different number of separate switches or poles within the package. Single pole has one connection made. Double pole has two separate connections made. Triple pole has three connections and four pole has four separate connections. Within each switch, all connections are made by a single motion of a single mechanism. Throws are the number of connections that can be made within a single pole. Single throw switches can only make one connection, which is between its two contacts. If an additional contact is added, the switch now has two throws. Therefore, a single pole double throw switch has three contacts and the switch can be thrown to make one of two possible connections, hence double throw. An SPST switch has one possible connection and two positions, open or closed. An SPDT switch can make two possible connections. However, it could have two or three positions, closed closed or closed open closed. An SBDT with only two positions is an on-on switch. SPDTs with three positions have a resting point between the two contacts where no connection is made and is known as on-off-on. Sometimes the on-on or on-off-on is marked on the switch, but that is not always the case. It's always best to check the product page or datasheet for this information. Another unfortunate fact about switches is that you can't necessarily tell what type of switch you have by the number of pins. For example, these are both single pole triple throw switches, but one has four terminals while the other has six pins. So the poles are how many switches are within a single package, and the throws are how many different connections each of those switches can make. Let's look at some examples to apply our knowledge. Here we have a DPDT switch. You have one switch here and a second switch here, all within a single package, making it a double pole switch. This switch can be up or down with two possible connections, making it a double throw switch. These switches will likely have six pins or terminals, and as we said before, can have either two or three positions, depending on whether it has an off position where no internal connection is made. For these switches, the terminals are easy to identify, and the circuit diagram in the datasheet looks very similar to the default DPDT symbol. Terminals 2 and 5 can make connections with either 1 and 4 or 3 and 6, respectively. Easy. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Here's the datasheet for some three-pole switches. The double throw switch requires nine terminals, three contacts, allowing for two connections in each individual switch within the package, 
requiring a total of nine pins. For example, when the toggle is down, contacts two and three are connected and that load is on. At the same time, five and six and eight and nine are connected and on. Toggled center, the entire switch is off. And when the toggle is up, contacts one and two are connected, turning that load on. At the same time, four and five and seven and eight are connected and on. Now notice the note at the bottom that S31T, the single pole switch, is missing three of the nine terminals. That leaves the necessary six terminals needed to have three single pole switches within the package. Manufacturers will often use the same package from a more complex switch to cut down on manufacturing costs. Sometimes the extra unnecessary pins or terminals are removed and sometimes not. Back on our wiring diagram, you can see that the extra terminals are connected internally. So for example, as long as your two switch connections are connected to one, two, or three, the connection will be made whenever the toggle is in the on position. Another thing to note is if you see COM or C, that would signify the pin that is permanently connected to the actuator. Now that we have a good handle on poles and throws, let's move on to relays. Here are symbols for various relays. They look like normal switch symbols, but with an extra squiggle. Do you recognize that symbol? It's an inductor. So far, the switches we've been talking about require physical contact to actuate the state of the switch between on and off. Relays are switches that use inductor coils, therefore electromagnetism to change states in the switch. We learned in our inductor episode that when current is passed through a coil, a magnetic field is produced with its strongest points at the ends of the coil. In relays, this generated magnetic force is used to attract or repel a metal plate that actuates the switch. Let's take a look. Here are the insides of a single pole single throw and a single pole double throw relay. Each has a single coil with a metal plate at the end. When current is passed through the coil, a magnetic field is generated and the plate is either pulled towards or pushed away from the coil. On the SPST relay, the plate being pulled in pushes the two contacts together. When the plate is pushed away from the coil, the two contacts are separated. On the SPDT relay, the plate moves a middle contact so that it is either connecting with the top contact when not engaged or the bottom contact when it is engaged. The pinouts for relays are fairly straightforward if you think of their corresponding switches. This SPST relay has two pins, pins two and three, for the switching portion, like a mechanical SPST switch, and then two additional pins, one and five, used to supply current to the coil. These relay pinouts were taken directly from component data sheets. You can see that relays typically have the same amount of pins as their corresponding mechanical switch with two additional pins for the coil. However, like with mechanical switches, the pinouts are not necessarily the same from relay to relay. Like with these two SPDT relays, where the coil pins are two and five on one relay and one and five on the other. One more thing to note on data sheets for both switches and relays are the notations for NO, normally open, or NC, normally closed. The switch as a whole or individual pins can be NO or NC. This relay is normally open, meaning when the coil is disengaged, the two contacts are separated. The circuit between them is open. Anything connected to those contacts would be off. Relays that are NC, normally closed, are therefore the opposite. If the relay is off or disengaged, then those contacts are connected, the circuit is closed, and anything connected to those contacts is on. This relay is a single throw double pull, so the top contact is normally closed, being connected when the coil is disengaged, and the bottom contact is normally open, being disconnected when the relay is off. So if we look at the pin markings on the bottom of the relay and the pinout from the data sheet, we can figure out that pin two and pin five go to the coil. Pin one goes to COM, while pin four is the top contact, which is normally closed, and pin three is the bottom contact that is normally open. While relays do require a second switch or a signal to trigger them, they are useful in that the triggering power can be quite small while controlling a much larger amount of power. One thing to remember when using relays is that the change in current in inductors can create a large back EMF, a voltage spike, that can damage other components in the circuit. For this reason, a flyback diode is often added to a circuit parallel to the coil to help protect these components. So far, all of the relays we've been talking about have been electromechanical, but there's another type of relay I would like to talk about, solid state relays. 
Solid state relays, or SSRs, have no moving parts, but instead use semiconductors to function. An SSR can be preferable to an electromechanical relay because while mechanical switching generates noise, SSRs are completely silent. They have faster switching speeds. There is no concern for bouncing, which can happen when a mechanical switch vibrates or bounces when switching states. There's no risk for sparking like between contacts on a mechanical switch. And they are less sensitive to environmental factors. The downside to using a solid state relay is that when closed, they have a higher resistance, often requiring the use of a heatsink. They generate more electrical noise. And unlike electromechanical switches that tend to fail open, SSRs have a tendency to fail shorted. There are other advantages and disadvantages to using solid state relays, but they get a bit more technical. If you decide to use one in your circuit, I highly recommend doing a bit more research. Well, thanks for joining me today. If you're still confused about poles and throws, or if you have some information you'd like to share about relays, please post your comments and questions on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!